What's up, everybody? Calvin Bowie, aka Captain Charisma of FK and Delicious. I'm with my girl, Noelle from Bass Girl Eats. Noelle is not only an Instagrammer. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what that even means anymore, but she's a great home cook. And you follow what she cooks. You cook, I mean, this is in a, your kitchen, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm so it's, sorry. It's either in my kitchen. I'm uh oh. So sorry. Don't eat that. <laughs> hey, for all you woke people, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Flies lives matter, my bad. Okay, so is, is this out of your kitchen? Yeah, um, so I'm totally an amateur chef. I am not professional by any means whatsoever. I did not go to culinary school. Um, I just enjoy cooking, I love it. And everything that you see on my Instagram is either in my kitchen or in my boyfriend's kitchen. So really? that's it. <laughs> what does this kitchen entail? Is there like a, a wolf range? Oh my God. Is there a, a, a double yeah, decker yes, oven? Everything is melee appliances. Yeah. yeah. No, oh, uh, by I the way, it's really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or Viking. Yeah. Viking is Cheers. really good. Cheers. We are oh, drinking wines yes. from the, what region is this? This is an Albarino. This is a great white varietal from Spain. Everyone loves albarino and if you don't you will so okay you gotta try it so it's from spain what region of spain um let's see here it looks like the rioja oh, or no, wait de mignon de origin oh there we go what's de mignon at de mision de mi okay all right i don't know but well, we're gonna enjoy it it is <laughs> it is lunchtime and we're yes. already drinking as the spaniards always do always noel is half spaniard yes half spaniard yes and so we're gonna be eating some food from the Basque region. Yes. We're going to be talking Spain. about the foods uh, in Spain. Yes. How they eat. Uh, what kind of style of foods they have. Yes. We can't bottom this up, right? Mm, can we? Can. Mm, we can. Sounds like a challenge. Oh, you were so much faster than me on that. I know. That was good, though, wasn't it? That was good. <laughs> Bright, crisp. Yes. Um... What grape is this? The is it a white Rioja? It's a white, no, it's a white varietal okay. um, that they have. But yeah, the Albarino is such a great, such a great white wine. Mm. It goes so great with half the stuff, well, everything we're having here today, right? What do we have here? Oh, wait, wait, I, let me turn the camera around. And then... Uh, yeah, we got to see uh, what we're eating here that's today. That's right. Everybody can see all the okay, here we good go. stuff. Here we okay. go. Okay. One, two, three. Damn it. One, two, three. There you go. <laughs> Start off the patas bravas, which is fried potatoes. And a red sauce, a tomato red sauce, right? Yes. That's it, right? I mean, yeah, it's actually, I think it's got like pimenton, which is a smoked paprika. Mm. So you've got that really nice smoky kind of flavor coming from there. That's, I keep smelling it. I don't know if you can. It's so good. That's my cologne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smoked pimenton. Smoke, that's right. <laughs> this is our favorite. I think we're most excited about this one, right, Calvin? This is pulpo. That's right, pulpo. It's so the, octopus. It's an octopus leg or an arm, depending on which sector of it. Yes. They poach it in a broth of carrots, onion, and celery, and maybe some bay leaf. Mm -hmm. And they cool it down, they slice it. Uh, I love the texture on that. Me too. I love the flavors on that. So good. What did I order on the, what did I order? Um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember what that one is. You're the worst host I ever had. Come I on, know. come on. <laughs> I have the menu over here. But it's over there. Um, it's like over there. Oh, shoot. And we're stuck over here. I know, we'll come back to that one. We'll come back to that one. Hi, what, what dish is that? The confit tuna. Oh, the confit tuna. that's right. The confit tuna. We forgot about that. That's right. We were, we were getting caught up in all the good dishes. And then we it's were with ordering. potatoes. Yeah, it's uh, like a potato salad. But so we have tuna and what else? We have potatoes, mayonnaise, all that. That's good. Okay. Good. Yeah. And this is my favorite. This is the Egg, escalivada. 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 Mm -hmm. Eggplant, roasted peppers. Yeah. I don't know whatever. The piquillo peppers. Oh, and then awesome. the, the and then the romesco on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then the croquetas, we got the... With the jamón. The jamón. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> let's let's finish off at the pulpo, the octopus. Oh, of mm. course. I agree. And then we'll go around. So the croquetas first. Yeah. Okay. So, Spain. Yes. España. Um, España. So bad. <laughs> I, I really love the bigger cities. Yes. Madrid. Yes. Um... Barcelona, 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 and then Catalan. Yes. But Valencia, Valencia. the home of paella, is also really nice. Yes, I love People it. People don't eat dinners at the normal hours. They're not like, hey, it's five forty-five. Right. Let me get the um, the uh, early bird special. <laughs> yeah. 
Their early bird special is 9.30. Yes, that is considered early. Right? Yeah, everything after 10 o'clock. Let me get you some croquettes here. Oh, thank you. And, you know, people people live to eat. They they dine out. It's social. It absolutely is. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that Spain is one of those cultures where, you know, some people eat to live. I think they live to eat, for sure. How does it comparison to what we have in San Francisco here? Oh, I mean, well, you know, for example, we were talking earlier, I mean... Dr- drink and eat. Oh, yes, drink and eat. Dr- drink and speak. Of course. Drink and, co- drink and co-host. <laughs> we can multitask, right. I mean, you know, here, you know, everybody, you know, they eat much earlier. No one's eating before 10 o'clock. I mean, everyone eats way before 10 o'clock at night. Um, and in Spain, too, you know, it's not uncommon whatsoever to go to different restaurants. Like, we're going to pop in here, have a glass of vino, and, you know, maybe some pan con tomate or some jamón or whatever, and then let's go on to the next place. I mean, here in America, it's like one place, you stay put, it's much earlier in the evening. The portion Large, the sizes, portion sizes are huge. Portion sizes are huge. They're, and as you said, they don't edit their food. It's no. just, let me put everything on this plate. Right. Yeah. And then call it what it is. Right. And in Spain, there's so much, you know, farm to table, celebrating local ingredients, um, keeping it very simple. You know, we used like sardines as an example earlier. You know, if you have like a delicious plate of fresh seasonal sardines in Spain, you're not going to find it muddled with a bunch of different ingredients. Don't ask for a ranch. <laughs> no ranch. No ketchup. No don't ketchup. Don't ask for a ranch <laughs> when you go to Spain. They no, don't have it. No, no. There's all these like, you know, superfluous sauces that yeah. you see here in America. It's like, it's all about showcasing the local flavors and paying, you know, homage, homage to, yes. you know, the local ingredients that you have and you don't need to do a whole lot to them. So simplicity is best, basically, Somebody right? is a foodie. <laughs> this is going to make my whole job so easy for the next 42 minutes. Let's start off with the croquette. Yes, we're having the croquette. Uh, croquette yeah. is... It's, uh, so it's... it's, it's was it roux? Well, it's I've actually made never, I never made these. I just made these for the first time ever. Okay. Yeah, here actually show them what's inside there. Oh, it's delicious. Funny. Yeah. It Look looks like a on. Twinkie. You got to make a salty Twinkie. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a Twinkie, but the inside looks 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 gooey and delicious. Yeah, it's and a they flowery slice roux. Right? Flowery roux. Mm-hmm. Then they add in the jamón yes. and then they they, fr- they probably freeze it to make sure that it sets yeah you can just refrigerate it for like a few hours you know to really get it nice and firm and then you're going to take it back out and you want to roll it you can use panko you can use you know whatever yeah breadcrumbs any kind yeah let's go now i got one for you so good imagine clam chowder (laughs) but in a cylinder format that's a good. That's a good example. With a breaded, a breaded crust. I, I mean, the, the creaminess inside, and it's great because it doesn't, it doesn't fall down. No. So it shows you how much cornstarch there is in this dish. <laughs> it's like really held together. It's nicely, really, isn't it's, it? it's binded really well. Yeah, it really is. And um, I mean, I, would, would you say how, how would you describe it? I mean, it's like. Um, <laughs> Salty, crispy goodness. <laughs> if you love jamón serrano, I mean, you, this is like a must. I mean, you can't not. If you have like it. bologna, if you if you like bologna, it's one step up from bologna. <laughs> maybe maybe slightly higher than that. But yeah. And again, don't, don't don't ask them for a ranch to dip it in. There's this no, is not a, no sauce. a a um. This is not a mozzarella stick. No. There's, but it's nice. No it's, it's, nice. it's a nice way to start a day, right? It really is. Mm. It's so great. I love it. Texture is great. Uh, execution is, is is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, you know, I've never seen a croquetta that that fell underneath, but when you see one that doesn't hold its shape, yeah, you gotta know. I there know. Sure. Mm. Mm. So good. Amazing. And then to pair it with the with the wine. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's talk about what you do for a living. Oh. Besides being a badass cook, <laughs> how did you get into Instagram? Um, okay, so this is a funny are, story. Are you an Instagrammer? Do you, you consider yourself one? I guess I do now. Oh. Um, yeah, and I actually just started it, believe it or not, January 10th of this year. Um, I, I always had my own personal, oh, thank you, yeah. my own personal account, but everyone was like, Noelle, half your stuff that you post is all food related. Can you just please have your own separate food account? <laughs> so I finally decided to do that. And that's when I came up with Bass Girl Eats. 
and um, it's just taken off in the last six months. It's just been so fantastic, and I loved it, and all the people I've met along the way, along the journey with you, um, and it's just been super rewarding, and it's just like pretty much the best hobby ever, yeah. you know? I mean, I just, I love it so much, and I love cooking, and I love sharing my passion for cooking and food with other people, so. They say that the moment, or if you want to hate your passion, make it your job. Uh oh, I right? know. If, if, and, and for me and for you, we don't look at this as an occupation. I don't. It's purely as, hey, I'm gonna go out and eat. I must well take you guys with us. Right, right, right exactly. Okay. So we are now gonna try the escalivada, right? Bless you. Yes. <laughs> I think that's what we're trying. Bless you. This is Calvin. He was really excited about this one because you are a big eggplant. I am a big eggplant and lover. Piquillo pepper. Piquillo peppers and romesco. Oh, and yeah, the romesco. That's what you're yeah, excited about. I know. This you is know, great. I'm, an artichoke. An artichoke. So I'm not like artichokes. Some people don't. So <laughs> well, I'm crazy. There you go. So I'm really big. Go, go eat. I'll talk. I'm really big on Sorry. taking the most common ingredient, chucking it in the oven. Roasting is my favorite technique. Mm. Roasting and braising. I mean, anything I just leave in there and like forget about it, right. my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. And so eggplant, when you eat it raw, it has this really bitterness to it. Absolutely. But if you know how to, if you know how to handle it, slicing it, salting it, yes. letting it drain, mm -hmm. chucking it in the oven with a little bit of good olive oil. Yes, absolutely. Spend your money on good olive oil and finish your dishes. You can always use other stuff to cook with. Yeah. I do a lot of uh, uh, roasted garlic at my restaurant, mm -hmm. like a lot. 20 kilos a week. Oh my gosh. So we roast, a lot of our flavors at El Camino are yeah. about roast, roasted garlic. So I always roast the garlic with just regular um, Vegetable oil. Okay. Don't hate. I do avocado oil all the time. Don't yeah. hate. Avocado no. oil is a great alternative. Yeah. Take that oil. Yeah. That has all that garlicky goodness. Yeah. Reuse it, and then you. And for me, it's like olive oil or good high end one. You just finish it. You want to taste it. You don't want to exactly. Want it I know a lot of people mistake olive oil as uh, as cooking, and I yeah. think yeah, that's actually not a good. You want to use something with a higher. Was it flash point? Right. So something, smoke point. Smoke point. Smoke excuse point. Yeah. me. So yeah. So I think something like avocado oil mm -hmm. or. You know, avocado. vegetable oil, anything like that. Yeah. Avocado, save, save your EBOO for the good stuff. Avocado, has <laughs> avocado, avocado oil hasn't made it to Vietnam yet. So, it sounds great. Now you're back here. I know, for 12 years, I have not seen it yet. So, it sounds great. I, there's nut oil, too. There's walnut oil. Yes, hasn't almond, been, yeah. Hasn't got to Vietnam yet. <laughs> but, you know, Rachel Ray is the one who really made EBOO a thing. Yes, she and sure you know, it's great to cook with, but, you know, all extra virgin olive oil is not cheap. No, it's not. And so I would rather spend my money on really high-end pressed uh, yeah. olive oil and finish it. So, roasted eggplant is my thing. Yeah. Roasted my, peppers, romesco yes. is something that I love. I think Sunny and I once asked each other what it is, and I didn't have an answer. It's uh, roasted, it's so, I, I know what it is now. It's roasted peppers. It's almonds and Ooh. garlic and olive oil and salt, but it's such simple flavors. Yeah, you know, it should exactly. be exactly. It shouldn't be sweet like sugar, but it should have that roasted sweetness. Right. Ready? Right. Yes. Absolutely. I know. Did you see? There's asparagus in here too. How dare they? Where? Oh, I, I see know. it. I see it. I know. There's all kinds of hidden stuff in here. You know, eating this asparagus really makes good. you pee. Smelly, right? What's that? When you eat asparagus, your pee gets smelly. <laughs> Don't I'm, remind me. I'm serious. I know. I'm serious. I think I think we're gonna be safe today because there's like not that much mm. in here, <laughs> except for this one giant bite that I'm about to take. But oh, uh, other than that, it's creamy. It's this really is, good, right? Yeah, creamy. It's, ex it's acidic. It's not super salty or savory. Mm -mm. But to me, this is what I would want to eat yeah. when I'm dining in Spain. Yes. This is not heavy. It's very light. It's vegetarian. It's vegetarian. Yeah. Maybe even vegan. Mmm. I think you're right. Oh, it's vegan. It's vegan. Oh, hey. Hello. <laughs> well, yeah. That may be some hand in my mouth right now. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but the point is, it is light. This one dish could very well easily go two to or two to three. Maybe even four, because I'm not trying to get full off of this one dish. No. I'm trying to get this one dish and like 16 others. 
Yeah. Every night. Exactly. For two weeks. <laughs> as many dishes as you can. As many dishes as you can. And you know, for me, the all the tapas bars in Spain. Some stuff is cooked to order. Some yes. stuff are at it's at a, a long bar. Yeah. And all they're doing is scooping and serving. Yeah, scooping. So cold you, tapas. You get a mm -hmm. glass of wine mm -hmm. for I don't know eight euros. Yeah. And then you know they have a great board. You get a glass of wine, and it comes with yes. a bite. It comes with yeah. a tapas. Yeah. And that's what it, tapas really just means a bite. Yeah, it's just um, so I, I heard like a rumor. I mean, I know there's variations to the story, but one of them is that tapas originated in um, Seville, in Sevilla, which mm -hmm. is the city in the southern part of Spain in Andal Andalusia, and oh, excuse me, Andalusia. And um, anyways, I, one of the stories that I heard was that it was like a farmer's bar and the bartenders there used to take a small saucer and they would put it over like the beer or the glass of sherry that they were serving to the mm -hmm. customers. Oh, thank you. The bite. Uh, right. So, so good. So good. Um, so they would cover the saucer with your beer or your, your sherry so that the flies and whatever else debris wouldn't get in. And then they started realizing, oh, hey, this saucer is also a really great little plate to put some jamon, yeah. some olives, vehicle, some cheese. Yeah. And that's what tapas literally means is a lid or a cover. And so I think that's how it kind of, I mean, that's just one of the rumors, but I mean, it makes sense that that's how it evolved. It's just, it's a small plate. Tapas are just, you're not trying to have a Thanksgiving turkey. You just want to have that's right, a bite. good bites of, you know, local food. That's, yeah. and, and these you know, bites are really well thought out. Yes, you absolutely. Know, everything has a component. Everything has, everything a, has a meaning on the plate. A meaning on the plate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I totally agree. When you go to GIF, <laughs> and they have tapas <laughs> and it's bruschetta it's a piece of bread and something <laughs> on top of it like hummus do not think that is that is tapas <laughs> <laughs> you mean those mozzarella sticks yeah. no okay <laughs> all right so what do we think about the, the the eggplant dish this was really good this escalivada yeah this was really good mm -hmm. i really liked it i liked how it was vegan it was kind of a breath of fresh air. I mean, I love the croqueta, but that is such a contrast, a stark contrast to what mm -hmm. we just had because it's something breaded and fried and very rich with the cheese and the jamon and the saltiness. And this is kind of like a breath of fresh air with the with the vegetables. And the vegetables and the, you know. Very light. They're very, it's very yeah. light. It's very, it's, it's, it's very fruit yeah. forward, but yeah. everything me uh, melts together. Really well. Yeah. I love the piquillo pepper. That's such a staple. And, Basque and Spanish cuisine and tapas. You'll find it in a, some of our other dishes here. And it's just, I love that smoked, yeah, that flavor. Goodness. I that, know. That goodness. Goodness. Okay. Do we go with the tuna confit or the pata, pata bravas next? Ooh. Um, I'm thinking tuna. Okay. After the vegetables, maybe maybe switch it up a little bit, then go back to some vegetables. I, I will yeah. not say no. You're not mad at it? Okay. No. <laughs> Good. Okay, okay, I'm going to just slide yeah, this up. Yeah, I'm scooching my eggplant over. Okay. So you Daddy. said earlier while we were drinking some beers that you used to spend your childhood in Spain. Yes, absolutely. Um, so my mom is from the town of Pamplona in Spain, which is in Nevada. Uh, it's the Basque region in Spain, um, which is in the... Uh, so the Basque region is kind of spans the Pyrenees Mountains um, into southern France, into um, Spain, northern Spain. And um, my mom is from Pamplona, and that is a town famously known for the Fiesta de San Fermín, which is the running of the bulls. Oh, that's where it's that's at. That's where my family's from, oh, yes. Oh, wow. So it was a super fun place to go to when I was a kid, and we would go for San Fermín uh, like almost every summer. It was incredible. <laughs> what was it like coming back in September when school started? That is so. The... All these kids are like, "What'd you do for summer? I went to Raging Waters. What'd you do for summer? Uh, I did a paper route. What did you do, Noel? I went to go to the Run of the Bulls. Right? I mean, that's what you. That's what you saw. Yeah, the exactly. Um, they do not let children run. Just so you know, I've never ran in there. Um, oh, really? I have seen many. Um, yeah, yeah, no, they this, don't. This face is shocked right now because I really <laughs> thought that the whole entire neighborhood. Gonna, they're not gonna let I didn't know that. that. That face was so real. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe they'll they could sneak in. I don't know, but I mean, yeah. Drink some wine, Noel. Drink some wine. I don't know if I'd want my child running in the running of the bulls. <laughs> No, because I've seen some guys get tossed. I in. actually have per personally witnessed um, some people getting tossed and gored at the running of the bulls. Really? It was really crazy. Um, yeah, it was when I was younger. But when I was 11, I did see somebody 
get pretty seriously injured. So it's it's very real. It's very exciting, but it's very real, and it's kind of a crazy um, tradition that's gone on for 800 years. 800 years? 800 years. When, when did Christ when did Christ <laughs> rise? It's gone on for so long. Before um, before Christ, or after Christ. I didn't. Know. Hey, if, if, if y'all know when, when Christ passed away, put in the comments below. All right. I have I, I have I have a uh, I have a small question to ask you. Yes. We're both Bay Area, right? Yes, we're I, Bay Area. I, I, I've spent my, some years here from 01 to 09. You yeah. were here off and on for 15 years. Yes, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beta Breakers. Oh. Have you done it? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, I have not. I'm a spectator. Really? I've seen everybody do it. <laughs> Can you describe to the audience what Beta Breakers is? Um, so Beta Breakers is an annual race that's done in end of May, right? Yeah, end yeah, of May. Yeah, yeah. And when it's starting to get warm. It's still cold yeah. in the morning, but it gets warm though. The reason why he's mentioning the outside temperature is that a lot of the participants in this famous race, um, it's clothing optional. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you are going to be um, very surprised sometimes by certain people that are running past you. Uh, it's they're not in the front of the line. I'll, I'll, listen, they're not in the front. <laughs> they're not sprinting. They're not sprinting. <laughs> they're not trying to finish with record timing, no, but they, they are in the back somewhere. Yes, yes. So, if you get there late, you will see a penis or two somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. All right. The reason why I said it was because... Everything's great. Thank you so much. The reason I brought it up was because... If you're gonna do the running of the bulls, how drunk do you need to be? I am very glad you asked this question. Before you ask, is yes. there, you know, do you sign a release form beforehand that says, oh, I'm, I'm good? Yeah, that's the thing. Um, not to my knowledge, and not the last time that I was there, was there any sort of release forms? It's like run at your own risk, and it's really funny because a lot of people do not realize. Um, you know, people watching on TV, or if you ever see the running of the bulls on CNN, you know, people don't realize it's actually taking place like it's before seven o'clock in the morning. It's very early in the morning. I don't know exactly when. I think it's like between six and seven in the morning. It's very early, and the problem is, is all a lot of the bars in Pamplona, especially during this time, don't close till two or three a.m. So you get a lot of tourists, um, Australian, British, um, all over Europe. Everyone, Good day, mate. Good everyone day. Everyone around the world, but I've seen some very um, oh, I, I, colorful people. We, we have Australians and a the British of, in Vietnam. They are hardcore fans. And they are hard. They do not go to bed. That no. is the secret. So they stay drinking until 3 a.m. Then they go back to their flats or whatever they do, mm -hmm. their Airbnbs, whatever. Keep drinking. And then you just go down there because you just got to go like delirious and sleep deprived. And pretty drunk. How and then that's your liquid courage. How, and then you how, can run in front of How <laughs> far is the run? Is it, how many kilometers is it? You know what? Gosh, I know. I should have come prepared or prepared. I do not recall. But I know it, it runs. It's pretty lengthy. And it runs through these slick cobblestone streets that yeah. have been around for hundreds of years. And the, the cobblestones get extremely slick because people are spraying them with wine and, you know, kava, which is sparkling sparkling wine. And it's very slippery. So a lot of times you're going to see the bull's hooves slipping on there. And... Likewise, other people slipping and falling, and it's just like this, like a giant slip and slide mess. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to run quite a ways. Um, again, I forget how many kilometers, but they run down to the center, which is called the Plata de Toros, and mm. that's where the, the run ends. But I mean, and then what do the bulls go after the after the Plata de Toro? I think they just they get, mean, they probably corral them into yeah, they okay. herd them out of there. But I mean, it's yeah. There's needless to say, many injuries over the years, and. I think the way to do it is people just don't go to sleep and they stay awake and they just drink. I don't, I don't think the beta breakers is that like intense. No. It's not as intense. But people get up at like 5.45 and they start they hitting do. the bars in Hate Street. That is hate, true. Hate Nashville. There is some similarities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I bring it up because I did it one time. I know. Well, so what, I did, was, what did you dress? Did you dress in costume? I, I, I dressed in costume. I, I, I was uh, cosplayed up and then I got drunk and then <laughs> somewhere halfway in the middle, I got lost. Uh -oh. I lost everybody. And I took a cab because this is like <laughs> this is like 2004, right? I took a cab oh. back to my back home and you know, it's fun, but you have like, been there, done that. I've been there, done that. Okay. Check it off your list. Oh, it's I am really a big proponent when it comes to confit yes. tuna. Yeah. So confit basically means you take a piece of fish, yep. something that's dense, and then you cook it in oil, ideally a good olive oil, and then it becomes flaky. Uh, when I was at Slant Door, we used to make a very nice tuna fish sandwich. Uh, 
that we use tuna loin and we and we can't feed it up and then we so i'm looking forward to this so they think of this as a potato salad right yeah. and this should be a potato salad something that has a little yeah. savoriness to it yeah absolutely okay. So yeah, it looks I don't like we have some more of the piquillo peppers in here. Piquillo is hot. Yeah, in this city. I know. You ready? To do it? Yes. So let's do it. Mm. Do some of that tuna. Can you do chilies? Ooh. How do you do chilies? Absolutely. Look at this. We just want to show you. Look at this. Uh, this nice garnish they gave us here. You got a little pearl onion, a cornichon. cornichon? A <laughs> we are so bad. We are so. <laughs> A serrano pepper <laughs> and an olive. <laughs> Ain't no one know what cornichon is, I'm, dude. Just, I am obsessed with cocktail onions, by Are the way. You? I'm like, they're like the best thing ever. Mm. <laughs> and then mm. the brininess, the saltiness, right. the creaminess. Oh, it's so good. It's really great to I have miss. that bite of acidity. And then you got this nice creamy, fatty goodness. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if to say it. Mm. And then you got these little, look at these guys. It looks like a giant, like, pan. You know, pan is bread. Yeah. Look at that. It's like a little baguette. A little mini uh, baguette. A mini baguette. Oh, it's so yeah. tiny. That's good, right? <laughs> <laughs> like a giant glorified crouton. <laughs> that is real good. That, that is, is good. real good. I like that. Mm. Mm. So far, three dishes. Yep. Again, it really reminds you of how to eat with small bites yes exactly you don't need to have like a super sized plate of something which i think america is pretty guilty of a lot of the times so when you, know? you go eat with your uh cohorts mm -hmm. cohorts right mm -hmm. so that's a word right that's mm -hmm. okay, good it's a word thanks 12 years in, 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 in vietnam <laughs> i just spoke as much i just spoke as much english in so freaking long <laughs> i know cheers to that cheers to that <laughs> 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 When you eat with them, and people are in your industry, right? What is their go-to restaurant? Oh my gosh! I mean, um, well, okay. So a lot of, it, especially I feel like in the Bay Area too, because we have so many great cuisines. But mm. um, I mean, and also I work in the Napa area. Um, so I work in the wine industry. Oh, so God, you know, a lot of is ad hoc still around? Oh, you know what? Don't I know. Dare. French Don't laundry. Shoot Don't you dare tell me my hero. The Thomas, guy, Keller. The, the Thomas, Thomas Keller. Thomas Keller. Thomas Keller, who's I, one of I've my. Shot, well. I've shouted out. I've shouted you out in many episodes. <laughs> the reason why I even started cooking my whole entire life. Sorry, Charles fan. Um, tell me, ad hoc still around? You know what? I think it still is. Um, I know for a fact French Laundry is. So yeah, French Laundry will in Yountville. If you guys haven't heard of it, it's an amazing restaurant. Yountville. <laughs> no, it's Yachtville. I, I, I just call it Yacht, I call it Yountville. <laughs> um, but yes, I know Thomas Keller is amazing, and yeah. So okay, but go to restaurants. I mean, I think a lot of people really love. I mean, well, a, Asian cuisine. You know, like I mean, I, ugh, Japanese sushi, things like that. But I mean, I think obviously. But Japanese cuisine in Japan is so and different. Japanese cuisine in the West yes. is different. So I, different. For me, back yeah. then, Ozumo mm -hmm. was a hot spot. Mm -hmm. That was 12 years ago, so <laughs> I don't know what's still around now. I know omakase is kind of like the hot new word in town, mm -hmm. but... It's not the same. It's not the same. No, no. I know. You know, there, there, there's high level omakase, and it's not omakase, by the way. Yeah. I don't know why people call it omakase. It's omakase. It's high level, there's low level, there's a, there's a guy in Tokyo, uh, near Shibuya. Okay. And it's literally, it's he lives in his restaurant. But wow. you can get eight courses, nine courses. Oh my gosh. 50 bucks. That's incredible. And, and the cuts of fish are thick. Oh. He always watches you to see if you go fish first into the soy really? or into the rice. And based on how you eat your sushi, he will cut you thicker or thinner. Guys, if you eat sushi, do not dip your nigiri. Fuck the rolls. <laughs> Although, I still Go love- the good stuff. I still love California roll. I'm, I'm, I'm a whore. <laughs> um, dip your nigiri, fish side down, pull it out, because the soy is there to bring a, a savoriness to the sweetness. Yep. But if you dip it uh, uh, rice side down, 
all of that soy sauce is gonna get soaked into that. And the rice is not regular rice. It's not Uncle Ben's rice. No. This is sushi rice. Sushi There's rice. Vinegar. Guys take years to perfect yes. that first part before they can even start cutting fish. Yeah. And so I hear the word omakase like throwing around all over the states, and I'm totally okay with them doing it. But it should be the day's catch. Yeah. It should not be yesterday's. It should be the best of that day with the best technique and the best and again pay homage to that that fish yeah. that fish gave its life yeah fish lives matter exactly i'm woke <laughs> cheers don't, don't cancel me everybody <laughs> i don't want to no buy him dinner Calvin doesn't want to be canceled <laughs> okay but this bravis this is my favorite favorite yes. dish because my god fried potatoes and then it's just a simple sauce made with pickled peppers it. So good, so fragrant. I wish they could smell this. <laughs> it's, it's oh, so no, good. The smell of vision. Smell of vision. I know. We need it. It's just amazing. All right. I go love ahead. the color. The color is vibrant. It's so great, right? Oh, oh shoot! We have five minutes. Yep, nine minutes left. Do this forty-two minutes. Oh my time. god! I, I know. Do when you're time flies when you're having fun. Okay, you ready? <laughs> yep. Mmm. Mmm. So good. That smokiness. Right? It's that, so pimentón is smoked paprika, and you're going to find that in so many Spanish dishes, right? Like, wow. Um, I put it in paella. Um, you know, it's just, it's in so many things. It's so great. It, it takes, if you just want to do like a simple vegetarian dish, oh my God, please just add pimentón to your vegetables. It'll just, it just takes it to the next level. Just elevates it. You just can't Pimentón is... Pimentón don't you dare. smoked paprika. Don't you dare say kikirondash. <laughs> Emro, you watching? Is he still alive? <laughs> yeah. I have to ask. I have to ask these things. It's been 12 years since I've been back. I gotta ask if he's still alive or not. I know. We gotta, we gotta, up, we gotta re-up you. Yeah, you yeah. gotta, you gotta get reacquainted. Still yeah. Still alive? He's still alive. Yeah. He's alive and kicking. Really? Yep. Bam. Bam. <laughs> Pimentón comes in a metal container. Like a tin. Like a tin. A tin. A tin. And then how much do you use regularly? So a little bit goes a long way. That's a good tip. Um, mm. Literally, I got a tin on Amazon. No joke. It's amazing. It's from Spain, and I paid like eight bucks for it. It's amazing. Really? And I just, I'm telling you, I, you would use the smallest can you, can little amount. Beers? Thank you. Um, you can use the smallest little amount, and it is just, it, it's so flavorful. Mm. So it's just, it's, yeah, you don't need to use a ton of it. It'll, it'll spread its flavorful wings <laughs> onto your food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's, that, 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 that is really good. It's so good, right? And it's, and it's literally just potatoes, a sauce. That's it. So simple. I know. It's incredible. And I have to tell you something. Um, so I heard recently that, you know, they're talking about the Basque cuisine in like San Sebastian, which is um, this city in the Basque region in northern Spain on the Bay of Biscay. And they are just renowned for their seafood. But they have so many Michelin star restaurants there. And we're talking like tapas bars. And it's just incredible to me. But I, I think it really is indicative of the quality of food that is coming out of this place, right? I, I mean, have not heard the word indicative for 12 years. <laughs> I miss that word so much. He's been in Vietnam for two long, but, ladies but, and gentlemen. But that word is so true to, Aww. to the context. Right? right? Yeah. It is. Oh, thank you. Michelin yeah. doesn't mean you have to be... Uh, fancy. fancy. That's exactly the point. You can have a restaurant. Thank you so much. Um, you can have a restaurant that serves three things, and you you can get a Michelin star for that because those three but things are the be best. Badass. They're the badass. They're the best. Badass. They're the best freaking things you've ever had. Like yeah. the best jamón, or you know, whatever. The best you know steak, whatever it may be. You know, and and you can get a Michelin star for that. You know, and okay. again, it's all about rewarding. I think. Star ingredients. Oh god, six minutes left. We have, we have, we oh still, no! We still, an, we still have an outro. I know. We still have an, oh, no, our wine's gone. Oh, wait, we're, we're, gonna do wi on. we're gonna do wine. We're gonna do wine. and, and beers. Wine oh, and beers. We're, we're, we're gonna do and beers. Pulpo is our. We we say the best for last. Yeah. Right? And too bad that we both talk so much that. I know. We, we don't shut up. <laughs> we don't shut up. Okay. <laughs> so right, it's it's, it's pulpo is potato. Yeah, beautiful. You can put it near the camera if you want to. I will do it for you guys right yes, now. Yes. There we go. Oh. And when you eat an octopus, yes. you should taste the sea. You should taste the 
fucking ocean. <laughs> It's deliciousness. It's deliciousness. Yes, because it's, it's FKN deliciousness. I know. Are you ready? Uh huh. Mm. Oh. When you have good octopus, yeah, it will taste not only of the ocean, yeah, but it has a texture of a good ham. Yes, it's not supposed to be chewy because no. chewy is overcooked. Chewy is overcooked. And there, there used to be an old wife, so you throw a uh, a wine cork into the in, into the water. Really? It doesn't work. No, it, 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 <laughs> there is old wife, so you throw a wine cork into your into your pot, into your boiling pot, and then it will tenderize the octopus. Use science. Yeah. Science will tell you at what temperature your water should be, for how long, and you know what? So you have to buy a thermometer for yeah. your water. Yeah. Go out there and buy a can of thermometer. It's like six dollars at Bed Bath Beyond. It's worth it. And you gotta buy a timer. You have a phone. But if you follow the scientific side, so I cook very scientific. I I, I hate to say it. I like yeah. to measure stuff out by the gram. Yeah, I know. Because I want consistency. Yeah. I want to make sure that everything is right the, every time. Yeah. But when you take an arm, a tentacle, a muscle that is is constantly moving through the ocean, it's doing this and and, and doing that, and you cook it correctly yeah you get something magical and octopus is not expensive no it's not it's so good and the reward is just so fantastic it's like and you know what i love about this calvin it's i mean for you guys watching it is so simply dressed i mean there's like what some olive oil mm -hmm. uh a little bit of the, the salt pepper, yeah yeah, yeah. Pepper, salt, yeah. Salt. and uh olive oil that's it that's it oh. that's it that's all, you all need. the all the salt let the ingredients speak for itself yeah. like let the let the protein speak for itself yeah. right you don't need to muddle it with a bunch of different flavors all the salt yeah. that the octopus has was in the cooking liquid right you want you exactly. want a taste of the sea mm -hmm. and so it's it's so adhered into it and whether this guy whether whether the chef he sous vide it or he boiled it yeah. either way it is beautiful, and these little medallions. Oh, and you can even see that you you can so see good. the little legs on them. Yeah, you know? that's so good. good. That's good. I already ate all mine. You did. <laughs> you see, I, I, I didn't give I didn't give you enough. <laughs> no, it's okay. Mm. I was like, I'll save the potatoes for later. I just went straight for the pupo. I can't resist. It's like literally my favorite dish. Like we said, we saved the best for last. Yeah, so good. Love it. Anything now, you do you like say? the little tentacles? I'm all about tentacles. Oh, I'm me all too. about tentacles. I'm all about team tentacle. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all about tentacles. <laughs> You know, you boil it and then you yeah. grill it so that the little legs, the little little suction cups, have a char on them. And um, so Sunny and I just did a video about octopus recently, uh -oh. <laughs> and so this my video might come out before his video. So <laughs> sorry, Sunny. <laughs> well, I know we're almost out of time. I think we got to show him this delicious beer we're drinking. It's mm. an Estrella from Spain, also. And we're it at... is a, a pilsner, a. a um, it is, um, it is deliciousness. <laughs> it is deliciousness. <laughs> and that's what I know. Where did I get the name? That's what I got the name from. Like, this is deliciousness. I don't know what it is. I don't know, but it's great. You want to say a few words? Um, thanks everybody for watching. Please follow me on Instagram at Bass Girl Eats. Love, thank you so much for having me here today, Calvin. It was super fun. And thanks Aww. for allowing me to share Spanish food with you. Aww. It's awesome to share my culture and cuisine and heritage with you. I don't, know say, I don't say it anymore. Aww. Like, subscribe, share, and comment <laughs> below. We really appreciate that. You guys now can uh, pledge money towards the show. There's a Venmo account inside the description. $1, $5, $10, $10 whatever you want. It really helps the show. As we continue on to other states and other cities, and support small business like uh, the Stapas. Yes, the right? Stapas. This is, this is a small business, a small, a, a small mom and pa shop. It's a very nice one, but yep. it's still owned not by a corporation. Correct. Right? Yep. So and we go out to other restaurants and we go out and we go film for you guys. So uh, donate, so pledge some money down below and it helps us out. It helps us buy beer, helps us buy good wine. <laughs> exactly. Right? Cheers to good wine and beer. Cheers to good wine and beer. Thank you so much, Noel. Thank you so much, Calvin. Oh, You're the best. My new buddy. I know. Oh. Anytime. She, she knows more about food than anybody <laughs> I know from Minnesota. Ah! I'm not from Minnesota. I know. <laughs> I, I know. know. We, we all know he's talking I about. I know. We but know he's referring to. I know, but 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 your your description towards food, your description towards technique, uh, the stories behind it, it really 
it really brought another level to the oh, to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you might be the new co-host. Oh, I'm, I'm free. I'm available. I'm, I'm gonna be done. <laughs> uh, David, if you're watching this, Noelle is an, an amazing person, and, and and for your two children, your mom is amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. We still have forty. I said it's that. What should we talk about? Um. Let's see who can eat the next piece of popo the fastest. I won't even swallow. I, I don't think I he chew. swallowed that. That was not I will, he I will, cheated. I, will, I, will, no. I actually chewed. I was trying why, to why would you chew for? <laughs> why would you save her for? Because I had to. That, that, that's that's on you. That's not on me. That's on you. That's on you. That was a stupid challenge. <laughs> All right, next time, you pick the challenge, and then uh, we'll see if I beat your ass on that. <laughs> see you guys later. Bye, guys. Bye. And that is 42 minutes. It's fun, right? <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> um